Hello everyone and welcome to this month's BoxyCharm unboxings. I'm excited to crack on in. I feel like it has simultaneously been forever since I've unboxed a BoxyCharm and also it feels like yesterday. So BoxyCharm has done so well the past couple of months. They ended 2020 well. Now let's see if they can start 2021 just as well, if not better. Okay, I knew I heard something liquidy. See a liquid something? Okay, this is, I thought so, a micellar water. So it's one of those biphase ones that you uh, shake up and get rid of your makeup. It's cruelty free, it's from Avant, and it's got hyaluronic acid and Brazil nut in here. It's that it's supposed to be very good for the skin. I'll try it. Next, I see something from Pharmacy. Very cute papaya print on the top here. It looks like this was made exclusively for BoxyCharm. This is the Daily Greens Oil-Free Gel Moisturizer with Moringa and Papaya. Okay, let's see. Are we gonna get any makeup eventually? We've got an eye cream here, which I, I will always be happy about an eye cream, at least if it doesn't burn and it works well. I love a good eye cream. This is from Dr. Brandt. This is the DNA Do Not Age Triple Peptide Eye Cream. I feel like I've tried something similar to that guy, but then next, ooh, we've got a, this is gonna be massive if it's in a box this big, but this is the Bali Balm, Sweet Orange and Coconut Lip Balm. It is vegan, bee friendly, so I'm assuming there's no beeswax in this. And it's a Tubi Balm. Awesome, I am always down for a good lip balm. I love lip balms. And then the only makeup thing in this box. We have got the Velvet Palette from Ciate London. Oh, it is so nice and smooth. I think it was maybe a couple months ago, maybe a few months ago, we got that Illamasqua, wasn't it Illamasqua palette? That was like this exact same color and feeling. So I was a little worried there thinking we got a repeat product, but let's take a look. Oh, it's just, it's that soft matte that I I love that color, a dusty pink rose, but more of a lilac than a pink. Ooh, good, good mix of mattes and shimmeries. I'm surprised that it's this warm of a color selection. I was definitely thinking it would be more cool to match the color of the palette, but cool. We'll give her a try. Let's see, what was the theme? Okay, fresh start. I kind of had a feeling once I saw all of this skincare, I was like, it must have to do with something. You know, the new year, new you, whatever. So honestly, not like the most exciting for me. I do prefer testing makeup rather than skincare, but let's see what we got in our premium. Bigger box, but it feels almost lighter than the last one. So once again, fresh start. And to start, we have got Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. It's cruelty free, very nice. The fact that they've described this as uber dewy. When, when did it come into fashion to say uber everything? I feel like it was in high school at some point because my brother was obsessed with saying uber and it, it just bugged me. But it's supposed to be very hydrating and make your skin look radiant. Okay, it's a mask. Now this, I'm definitely excited about. I will always take a new makeup remover cloth. This is the PMD Silver Pure. It's silver infused. Antibacterial, ultra soft, and reusable. Interesting. You hear that it's silver infused and instantly I think it's gonna be all rough, but this is very soft. Just a pink square with a hangy thing. Cool. I'm actually very happy for that. I'm curious to see if that infusion of silver does anything to make it any different than like a makeup eraser. And for the palette, we got something from Ofra. This is the Mini Mix palette, good to go. All right, so it looks like we have got blush, bronzer, highlight, and some eyeshadows once again. Very warm looking. I feel like I have this highlight. I mean, it's gorgeous. 
but it makes me want to like not use the palette and give it to someone who doesn't already have it. But at the same time, I'm very interested to see what I can create with those colors. And then we have got three more little boxes, skinny boxes. We have got the Fenty Beauty by Rihanna Full Frontal Volume Lift and Curl Mascara. I think I tried a mini of this in a like full face of first impressions of new makeup that I'm excited about and I feel like I was not excited about this mascara in the long run but you know sometimes that can just be that the mini was dried out and or it just doesn't work well as a mini so I guess I'm willing to give it another shot full size and then I think this was a choice product. This is the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick eye color. I picked out the shade Cashmere by the time I logged in to do my choices. Things were very picked over, but this looked like kind of a icy pink if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, it's a matte. That's right. It's a matte pink, but I thought it might be kind of reminiscent to like a painterly paint pot for MAC. I don't know. I thought I would give it a try. And last but not least, we have got a... Ooh, nice. I'm also always down for this because my brows always end up getting weird bald patches in them. This is the Lashes MD Eyelash Slash Eyebrow Conditioner. See results in that in three weeks. Initial results, excuse me. So certainly more excited about the premium box, but not too excited overall for the BoxyCharm products. Like a lot of that has to do with the heavy amount of skincare, and it also has to do with the fact that, as I said, the past couple of months have been so good for BoxyCharm. But hey, who knows? Maybe I will find something surprising, and we will find out together. So I will see you all in just a second so we can get to test in some. Something. Ready? Ding! Hello everyone! Welcome back! Time to test the makeup! So I'm gonna go ahead and... <laughs> I'm so wary. This is gonna be so deep on me. I'm gonna go so lightly. So lightly! But I'm gonna remember to smile through it because I'm beautiful anyways. Right Oprah? Right Oprah? Pat, pat. That's it. That should be plenty! Okay, I actually, I just touched it a little bit. It's actually kind of a uh, stiffer, I thought it was going to be a lot more creamy, like one of their highlights, but actually, actually though, I'm going to boop up more time. They made it sheerer. Oh, oh, well done, Ofra. Well done. That ended up working great. Now I have tried the highlight and blush before. I don't know that I've tried this color of blush. It's in the shade. I never know if they flip the shades or not. So it's either intentions or current. Either way, I'm just gonna do a woo 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 into the highlight. From what I remember, that should be, oh yeah, plenty for both of my cheeks. And it's just beautiful. It's shimmery, but it still looks natural. It still melts into the skin. I love this highlight. Oh, it has been a minute since I've used it, but it's making me want to whip mine out. Of course, you can use the highlight shades all separately, but I like mixing them together. I mean, you have to see that, right? Like, it's one of the more blingy highlights, if I build it up, that I actually enjoy wearing. Oh, there's no way the camera isn't picking that up. It's impactful. <laughs> Seriously, at least in real life. And I can see it in my viewfinder, which always trips me up a bit. But I know this is technically a powder brush, but blush is a powder. So I'm gonna use it uh, for this blush. Looks like it's gonna be, a, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. Those are some rosy cheeks. You see a difference? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Blends just as beautifully as I remember. Oh, oh. Fra. If only that was how you pronounced the brand name. Oh, Fra. Oh, Fra might be something you want to look into. Eh, 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 eh. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, now for the eyes, I want to test out this cream shadow because I always go in with the hopes that a cream shadow can be a cream shadow and a primer for me. I don't think that ever actually happens, but I know for a lot of people, that is how they are able to use cream shadows. So. I'm gonna put primer on one of my eyes 
and then not on the other one. And we'll see if it makes a difference. So cashmere from Laura Mercier. Let's see how you do. Put it on my not primed eye first. And it looks, yeah, very, very reminiscent of Painterly from MAC. Blends out really nicely. I think this has more of like a lavender mauve to it than Painterly does. That's a bit more of a light pink, but either way, it's a nice, nice base color. You can wear it on its own or as a base. And I think it looks real nice. Now let's see how and if I can use these eyeshadow palettes in tandem. I mean, really when they're held up with each other, they do go quite nicely. And the one thing I do like about these Ofra palettes is that you can see the little, the little dip in there. It's so you can put a spatula in there and dig them out so they're magnetic and you can change them up or just take out the ones you like, put them in a Z palette or something. So I actually, I really like that. But let's see, I'm gonna use this little BH Cosmetics Studio Pro number eight brush and I'm gonna use this. Lies, I am still gonna do that, but second. So I'm gonna use this Real Techniques brush. It's a 305 blendy brush from their glitter collection. I'm gonna use this in, it looks like a satiny. I wish, I feel like, I thought these were matte, but I feel like they look like they've got a bit of a sateen to the tops of them. I don't know, I guess we'll find out here. But I'm barely touching and it looks like it's really picking up product. So I'm just gonna use this in my crease as a bit of a transition shade. Ooh, that is a lovely, it's like a grapey lilac, really pretty to sheer but that might just be because i only did a few little taps in there but that's actually gorgeous i feel like a lot of companies struggle with these kinds of shades maybe it's because it does have that little bit of satin to it that it's blending so well and isn't going on patchily but on the eyes it still it maintains the matteness that i thought it would be although it is curious even just like from dipping it can you see how dark it is in the middle there i don't know what that is is that like pre-hard pan I hope not. I wouldn't even say I've really dipped into it yet. I've just tapped into it. So that shouldn't be happening so quickly. But overall, that's a gorgeous shade. All right, now I'm gonna go in with this BH Cosmetics brush and I'm gonna go into this shade right here. Tripping over my words. Hey, this one's doing the same. Maybe it's just like taking the satin looking bit off the top and is leaving me with uh, the matteness? I don't know. I really don't. I'm kind of confused about what this formula is supposed to be. I mean, it's good so far. Nice and, nice and blendy, but also nice and confusing. So I'm not focusing too, too much on blending this. I mean, a little bit, but I'm just putting it on the outer point of my lids and then placing it along the underside of where I had put that lilac shade. And then I'm gonna go in for a little bit of multi-purpose magic using this contour shade from Ofra in the fluffy blender brush. And I'm gonna use this to blend, blend, blend these couple of shadows together. All right, now we struggle to choose between these two beautiful metallic eyeshadows and the array of these beautiful metallic looking eyeshadows. Maybe I'll do one of each. So, with a flat little Pacchiani brush. This is the shading brush from Real Techniques. I'm gonna use this shade here because it's very similar looking to one of the shades in the Ciate palette. So theoretically, or color theoretically, it should work out. It looks a lot like this one down here. But I'm gonna use this on the outer half of my lid to kind of match that matte one that we had put on the outer tips. Gorgeous. All right, I extended that way past the outer half, but oh, well, you know, it is what it is. And I just color switched to that a little bit. And then I'm gonna use this lilac-y shade here. And I'm gonna put this on the inner portions that we have left and blend that into the previous metallic shade we used. Ah, but see the metallic one didn't do that like hard pan looking thing, right? I mean, it just looks like I used a wet brush in these two. I mean, I hope it doesn't lead to problems in the future. It just kind of looks like it's going to, but either way, 
pinkies in the champagne -y color because of course we have to highlight our inner corners and then I'm just a curious cat. I want to see if this will be like kind of a sparkly overlay. I think it will be. And I'm just going to tap this right in between and then across the lids where those two colors had met. Oh, lovely, lovely. Just sparkles and brings it all together if you ask me. Ah. Oh. Now we can get on into the mascara in the shade because I'm black. I think this only comes in black, but I could be incorrect about that. But here's the packaging and here's the wand. Oh yeah, that's right. This one is that flat pancake -y one if you turn it to one side and then it's thick on the other side. They say it's supposed to help with like, you know, flipping between the two different sides to create volume and la la la. I didn't find that it made a difference personally, but either way. So real quick, here it is with one coat. I'm going to go in before it dries on my top lashes and put on a second load, a second load, a second coat. So there it is with two coats on the top lashes. I do feel like this performed like I remember it does. It's definitely on the more wet side for mascaras, but it's not too, too wet. And it certainly does volumize more than it does anything else, which I mean, it's a volume lift and curl mascara. I wish it gave a little more length, but I do think that for a volumizing mascara, it's okay. It's on the average side, but I would say it's on the better side of average. It made my lashes look nice and fluttery. I just personally, I don't know. I just feel like it's missing a little something, a little something extra overall. Not terrible. And yeah, there is the eyeshadow look as a whole. I think it turned out pretty. I think my cheeks look good. And yeah, that's it. I would say now we can put on a lip product, but I'm saving the lip balm for later. I'm gonna use an actual, oh, whatever will I do? It's not like I don't have enough lip products on my own here. So I'm gonna go ahead put on a lip product, get on with my day, test out the products here, and then I will check in with you all. We will see how they wore at the end of the night, and then we can test some of these products for taking them off. See how those do. Ready? Ding. Hello, my friends. End of the night here. So, before I take my makeup off, I figured I should show y'all. I went ahead and took the close-ups under my ring light, but, I mean, it looks like the cheek products all hung in fantastically. The eyeshadow products hung in much better on the side that I used a primer as well as the eyeshadow stick. You know, they don't look horrible on the side that I used the eyeshadow stick as a primer, but definitely hung in better on the side where I had used a primer. And the mascara, it looks like it flaked the tiniest little bit, but it doesn't look too bad in terms of like smudging or coming off or whatever. So all good on the makeup front, I would certainly say you know, I can see myself using all of those products, the palettes, the eyeshadow stick, and the mascara in the future, but we have more products. So I am not going to use the mask tonight. My skin is not doing great. So I'm going to try and use as few new products on it as possible. I do want to see how the remover, the towel, and the eye cream, and the lip balm feel. Uh, the Lashes MD I will use on my own. I mean, that's not something that I can put on and you guys can be like, wow, instant growth. I mean, wouldn't that be cool? I think so. And then the moisturizer I will use eventually when I need a new moisturizer. I tend to like pharmacy products for the most part. So I'm going to start off with the towel. We've got the not as smooth side. They're both very soft. Don't get me wrong. But one side is more smooth soft and the other is more like fluffy soft. Either way, I'm gonna get this all nice and wet. I'm gonna assume it works like any other makeup removing towel. They do all seem to be one and the same, but like I said, the fact that there's silver in this, it just, 
I mean, I guess it probably won't do much more in terms of getting the makeup off, but I just like the fact that it's antimicrobial, antibacterial is maybe the word I was looking for. I mean, are things like the makeup eraser, I wouldn't think those are bacteria absorbing, <laughs> but I guess I don't know. The fact that they advertise about the silver makes me think that they advertise it that way because other products can't say the same, but I don't actually know for sure. But we are getting makeup removal. Yay, joy to my face. We'll be in bed soon, but not with makeup on. Cause that's bad for your skin. And your skin doesn't look great anyway, so let's help it out as much as we can. Let's help it as much as we can. With the power of makeup removal products from BoxyCharm. I know, I know. Y'all are gonna want me to head to the studio and <laughs> get you a track that you'll be able to download on iTunes. It's not happening though. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to fend for yourselves. <laughs> Ah, all right, so that felt nice. It's kind of just reminding me in general that I think I need to buy some. I don't know, like in my head, those things lasted forever, but apparently they aren't. So the ones that I've had for years and years, I really need to replace them. So I'm gonna go in with a makeup remover round thing. It said to shake this and then saturate a cotton pad. No, I'm trying to get away from single use type products like that. So I'm gonna go in with this cotton pad replacement, reusable round, and I will saturate it with your substance. This is a strange observation, but it's just like the same color blue that they use in like period tampon commercials. Very strange. Very scented, my God. It's kind of like a baby powder, kind of a perfume, maybe with a little bit of floral. It's really strong, but it's working very well. I mean, granted, this isn't waterproof mascara or anything, but it looks like it's removing very, very easily, which is great. But I don't know, something it really does, like baby powder, but also baby wipes. I really don't like it. And to have it be that fragranced to use on your face and like your eyes and stuff, like that just seems bad. But like, it's doing a great job. All right, so as I said, it did very well. I haven't gotten all of it off yet because I don't want to get too close to my eyes, like close to my lash line, because this is so fragranced and I'm never going to use it again because of it. It really reminds me, uh, it struck me as I was continuing to use it. It reminds me of, uh, remember when we used to be able to like go to malls and stuff? Yeah, uh, the good old days, but very specifically reminds me of like a Nord Nordstrom bathroom in the baby changing nursing area. Like, it's got all of those kinds of powders and wipes and baby smells. And it's a lot. It's just a lot. I don't like it, so no thank you. Now I'm gonna wash my face. All right, here we are, washed and cleansed and moistured and all of that, but two parts of my face are not moisturized and I would like to fix that. That would be my eyes and my lips. Two, I guess my two most favorite, favoritest places to moisturize on my face. So this is very important stuff, my friends. This is the Dr. Brandt Triple Peptide Eye Cream. It says you can apply this AM and PM. Just gonna do a little bit. And just very lightly work this in under my eyes. Ah, oh, I think it's refreshing. <laughs> there was a slight moment where I was like, oh, burning, but no, it's not. And it doesn't necessarily feel like hydrating in that cooling way, but I can feel, it feels like it's getting deep down for moisture. So that's cool. I can continue testing that. And now we've got this lip balm, which I'm very curious to smell it. I mean, coconut and sweet orange. That's just not a combo you hear of too often, if ever. So it's clear balm. Ooh, smells like a tasty treat. Mmm, very melty. 
very oily, but still has a very smooth, slightly plush feeling to it. I like it. I mean, it's a lip balm. <laughs> I'm down. Although it is very um, flavored, getting into my mouth a little bit. It doesn't taste bad, but it tastes like lip balm and like orange dreamsicle, but like 80% lip balm taste. 20% good, delicious dreamsicle. So um, that's gonna do it for me. As I have said, not great for this month. This is not how I wanted to kick off the year with BoxyCharm, especially compared to the last two months that have been so good for me. But you know, that's kind of just the true trajectory of subscription boxes and stuff. You know, you've got your goods, your bads, your all the in-betweens with them. So I am going to keep my fingers crossed that the trajectory goes back up instead of continuing to go down, but we won't know until next month. So hang in there, my friends. I, I don't think this will be going up in February. No, no, no. I'll get it up in January for y'all. So yeah, hang in there. We'll make it to February. As always, please let me know if you have tried out any of these products. How do you feel about them? Also, do you get BoxyCharm or its add-ons like premium and all of that? What did you get in your boxes this month and are you happy or sad about them? Just let me know all of the things down below. You can also let me know if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful somehow, whatever the case may be, by giving it a thumbs up down below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe. You can tippity tap that notification bell down below and become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, just stay well until then. Bye! <laughs>